start the day's other headlines in the Middle East. The U.S. says it remains committed to talks to end the fighting in Gaza ahead of negotiations planned for tomorrow in Qatar. That comes after a top Hamas official said the group was losing faith in the U.S. to mediate a ceasefire. It's unclear if Hamas will indeed attend the talks in Doha. Meantime, in Gaza, health officials say Israeli airstrikes killed at least 17 people. While in Beirut, a special envoy for the Biden administration met with Lebanese officials and emphasized the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. There is no more time to waste, and there's no more valid excuses from any party for any further delay. The deal would also help enable a diplomatic resolution here in Lebanon, and that would prevent an outbreak of a wider war. Concerns about a broader conflict were only heightened by the death last month of Hamas leader Ismail Haniya in an explosion in Tehran. Iran has blamed Israel and has vowed to retaliate. The Taliban marked the third anniversary of its return to power in Afghanistan today. That included a military parade at the Bagram Air Base, once the center of the American-led war. Some of the military hardware on display, such as Humvees and tanks, were left behind during the evacuation of U.S. and NATO-led forces back in 2021. Taliban leaders praised their own achievements, but made no mention of the hardships faced by the population there. Some Afghans in Kabul addressed those challenges. There is no work in our country, and many people are unemployed, so they are forced to migrate to Iran and Pakistan. If there are good job opportunities, no one will want to leave. Aid groups say millions of Afghans are on the brink of hunger and starvation following decades of conflict. The World Health Organization has declared MPOX outbreaks in Africa a global health emergency. Formerly known as monkeypox, the virus is transmitted through close contact and can cause painful lesions all over the body. The WHO says there have been more than 14,000 cases in Africa so far this year, the vast majority of them in Congo. Scientists are concerned that a new version of the disease may spread more easily. The WHO director general said today that outbreaks could become a global threat. Today, the emergency committee met and advised me that, in its view, the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. It's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives. Western countries have been able to control the spread of MPOX with vaccines and treatments, but those have not been readily available in Africa. The Atlantic storm known as Ernesto has strengthened into a Category 1 hurricane after it pounded the northeastern Caribbean. In Puerto Rico, floodwaters consumed entire streets, power lines toppled, tangled in knots. Roughly 700,000 people in more than 20 hospitals were without power today. Ernesto turned away from the Caribbean today and is expected to intensify as it crosses open waters heading north toward Bermuda. Expectations are growing that the U.S. Federal Reserve will cut interest rates at its meeting next month after the latest sign that inflation is cooling. Data from the U.S. Labor Department today shows that consumer prices rose just 2.9 percent in July compared to the same month last year. That's the first time inflation dipped below 3 percent since 2021. President Biden seized on the cooling prices when asked about inflation at the White House today. Has the U.S. beat inflation, Mr. President? Way. Yes, yes, yes. I told you we're going to have a soft landing. We're going to have a soft landing. My policies are working. Start right in that way, okay? Inflation consistently ranks as a top concern for voters. It's come down significantly from a peak above 9% in 2022. That inflation news helped drive some modest gains on Wall Street today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average added 240 points to close just above the 40,000-point level. The Nasdaq added about five points, so virtually flat. The S&P 500 ended higher for a fifth straight session. Still to come on the news hour, why Baltimore has been hit especially hard by drug overdoses. New reporting details the perilous journey migrants are making across the land bridge between North and South America. And NASA weighs its options for bringing two stranded astronauts back home. This is the PBS NewsHour.
from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.